As you prepare to see former Roman Catholic priest for 22 years, Richard Bennett's video entitled, The Pentecostal Road to Rome, I, Larry Wessels, Director of Christian Answers of Austin, Texas, Christian Debater, wanted to remind our viewers that we have an entire playlist on our YouTube channel, See Answers TV, dealing with the threat of the Pentecostals and Charismatics called Dealing with Phony TV Preachers, TBN, that stands for Trinity Broadcasting Network, and King James Onlyites. Particularly see our videos with theologian Rob Zins of Dallas Theological Seminary. Those shows are Blasphemous, Charismatic, and Pentecostal Mayhem, number one. Mad delusional experiences replace scripture alone. Two, a hyped circus, sham unity, Catholic charismatics. Three, they all get sick and die. Scripture twisting liars. Four, demonic gifts, open violation of 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Five, money-grubbing, filthy, rich TV false prophets with more of these videos coming in the future. Richard Bennett's ministry report states the following about the video you are about to see. The Pentecostal Road to Rome, the phenomenon of what is called speaking in tongues, continues day by day. It is not only a blight on the Lord's gospel of grace, but it additionally increases the expansion of the falsehood that if you speak in tongues, you are not only saved, but you are spirit-filled. This dreadful lie continues as Pentecostal people work together with Roman Catholics. Moreover, a delegation of Pentecostals led by televangelist Kenneth Copeland met with Pope Francis at the Vatican in November 2015. Thus, it is truly necessary that this expanding falsehood is challenged with biblical truth. Greg Bentley runs two ministries, HelpForCatholics.org and WhatEveryCatholicsShouldKnow.com. Together, he and I clearly analyze the deception. And now for our main video presentation. The topic of discussion is the Pentecostal movement and its road leading to Rome. With me is Richard Bennett, um, a former Dominican priest. Richard uh, has a tremendous story of his involvement in the Catholic charismatic renewal movement in the early years of his study as well as being a priest in the island of Trinidad. And Richard, you've been a, a real blessing to me over the years, and your testimony has shaped the development of the faith of many people to hold firmly to the written word of God versus clings to the trappings of religion. And as I've listened to your story over these many years of coming to biblical faith, it, it really is the fulfillment or living out that uh, the parable when it, in the scripture when it talks about the, the, the pearl of great price that you found and, and how your life completely changed and uh, not just switching churches but completely changing how you lived your life out, what it, you did for a living. It, was a, it must have been an enormous transition to leave the comforts of such a secure system and to come and trust in the Lord and move faithfully uh, with Him. You've been a great encouragement to us former Catholics. Um, thank yeah, you for being I, here. I thank you, and um, I have been inspired by other men like in my own life, um, like Victor Alfonso, the former Jesuit priest, and Bob Bush, and people like that, who um, who also got tied up in Pentecostalism too, and got mm -hmm. got beyond Pentecostalism, as you'll see in our book of 50 former priests, uh, quite a few 
got beyond Pentecostalism besides getting beyond uh, Roman Catholicism. So I have been encouraged myself by other former priests. Mm -hmm. And as uh, part of your story, Richard, is um, your very early um, life as a, as a Roman Catholic priest and studying in the Vatican, actually, in 1962. And that was a, a monumental year for the Roman Catholic Church. And you were right there in Rome studying as the Second Vatican Council was put into pen and implemented. Um, the that was the very beginning of what we all know as the false ecumenical movement. Many, however, are not very familiar with that terminology. Could you help elaborate about this movement, its origins, and its very purpose? Yes, first of all, it was um, because of the Vatican, because of Rome. Uh, I was in the city of Rome, but um, my studies were not at the Vatican itself, it was nearby at um, the Angelicum University. Uh, and it's not in Vatican City itself. It is uh, in the city that is belonging to the Italian government, Rome, and it was near the Colosseum. So that was, that was where I was <laughs> at the time of Vatican II. I was studying um, my last year for biblical studies. I had already been ordained a priest in 1963 and then in uh, 1963, um, uh, in, in September, going into 64, I was studying at that university in Rome itself. And it was um, out of Rome uh, at, the, at the Second Vatican Council to the same council that was going on while I was actually there in Rome. Mm -hmm. um, that the um, Catholic Church changed its stance completely, its method of dealing with churches. Before it had condemned all religions, it's saying it was the only true religion. It condemned Buddhists, uh, Muhammad, and the, the uh, Islam, and, and, and Bible believers were called heretics. And, uh, and then it, ch it changed completely. It was like a 180 degrees change. It changed to accepting. Were you aware at that time the, the magnitude of what was discussed? In uh, I, 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 was, I was aware that something was in the air. We discussed it, but we didn't read. We didn't have the documents when I was actually there at Rome. There were only being, they, they were going to begin to be printed uh, and then translated into different languages. So, but we got wind of it, the talk of what was going on, mm -hmm. because you know we're part of the church and we know what's going on. It wasn't until a little while later, the following year, when I was sent to Trinidad, that we actually got copies. And then I was very well aware, because it was implemented nearly right away there in Trinidad the decisions to accept other churches. They were now to be called separated brethren. <laughs> Bible believers no longer condemned. And the Hindus and the Buddhists and the uh, and Islamic people, Muslims, were accepted to having a, a form of godliness, you know. And uh, I was horrified because literally I had neighbors who were Buddhists mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, Hindus, and uh, I knew some um, Islamic people. We hadn't got many Muslims, we had some Muslims in Trinidad. So I was aghast at the Catholic Church accepting these religions. Please remember that that since the Vatican II, the Roman Catholic Communion at least, took a 180 degree turn and it recognized explicitly and formally that the Holy Spirit is at work in other religions. Hence, some of their rituals, without designating which ones and getting into the details, also lead to salvation. And this is a fundamental truth that hasn't filtered down too far. It certainly hasn't gotten into the pews and I'm not so sure how far it has gotten down the various corridors of the Vatican. But this is what the fathers of the church in the most authoritative formal teaching of our times have said. It's so wonderful that we can forgive them 
that it took 1,900 years to get there. These religions, uh, I had seen with my own eyes some of the things that go on in these religions, and then the fact that we had accepted them as a church, and that, that horrified me because I, I knew I didn't live in like Western society. I lived in the more Caribbean society. Mm -hmm. And here in, in this island where I lived for 21 years, I saw, um, I saw how people lived, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I was horrified that these religions, and then that uh, our, our belief at the time as Catholics that, that uh, we always condemned the Protestants and hated them. You know, that was my culture in Harlem too. Mm -hmm. And now to see that evangelicals are accepted as brothers and sisters in the Lord, you know. And I, uh, I, I was aghast because this is, not the, this is not the way I was trained. I was trained for seven long years in theology and philosophy. And this is not the way we were trained. And, and as <clears throat> the Vatican laid out these plans, they were actually, they had a way to implement this movement to draw men and women from other religions and, in, and also from the uh, Protestant denominations back into, the, into Rome. What were some of the means in which uh, the Catholic Church was planning to implement? Yes, they, they, they actually spelled it out. They said that they were to, um, you know, to speak to and communicate with leaders of churches and to individuals in churches, but particularly the leaders the pastors, and that they were to, little by little were the exact words that they said, to win them back to the bosom of Mother Church. They were the words that they spoke. And uh, the, um, it, it, it's strange to see that um, just what they said. Uh, we will have on the screen appearing some of the official wording of these decrees. You know, it, 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 it was amazing because uh, um, I, I was horrified to see that, uh, you know, and uh, it was um, particularly the, when it came um, to accepting, say, the Assemblies of God. Not only was that um, not um, <laughs> kosher or not right, but it was that the, the Assemblies of God were those who who believed in all the emotionalism and speaking in tongues and all these dramatic things. And uh, it became very, very well known. In fact, we had in Trinidad in, in the late 60s, uh, I was there in 64, for coming up now to 67, 68, we had a leader from the Assemblies of God come to Trinidad and lecture us as priests. <coughs> so when, once the plan was formalized, it was within a very few years, that it was put into practice within yes, a it, few it, short it, years. It, it you were already being it, we're in we're, communion we're, with Pentecostal yeah, and we charismatic being, groups. We were being indoctrinated. Mm -hmm. The fact that we were not only uh, uh, we we're, were not only have been born again mm -hmm. uh, by infant baptism, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. by water being poured on our head, but now we could be uh, spirit filled. Uh, and learn to speak in tongues. So this was, a, a, we had a courses in this, and one was run by one of these Pentecostal leaders uh, from Vancouver in Canada. And uh, I, I, was, I was amazed that, and then I began to accept, because this, at least it's lively. <laughs> I mean, when, you, when you've been baptizing babies, <laughs> For, uh, for many, many years, and, uh, and then you've been uh, going, hearing people's confessions, and n nothing seems to happen, and you know, I mean, it, it, it's, uh, it, it becomes quite boring, you know I mean, and, and, and then these jazzy uh, Pentecostal hymns, you know what I mean, there's power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb, and all, uh, good words and good meaning, and so, sung so dramatically that th this had life, you know, I mean, seemingly for those who were, we were accustomed to rituals, here was something with a, a flavor to it, you know. So, so, so you embraced it immediately. Uh, I, I embraced it, it didn't, yeah. I, I, I was a rational I mean, man. Emotionally it yeah. touched me and then immediately, and then 
Uh, it, was it the was it actually speaking in tongues that it, created this in you? It, it was. It was. Um, we were always trying to get people to come to the mass mm -hmm. and uh, to go to confession and go to communion right. because we believe that the sacraments are the instruments of salvation. It is. It is. You know, when you practice the sacraments, right. so this will bring more people to church. Mm -hmm. And if you put on a, a good show, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. and. Um, I had spotlights then put up in the church so that I could be seen in my preaching of this stuff. And I had long hair at that time coming down over my ears, you know, and a, and a large dark beard. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, the, the, and, and pe people did start coming, you know, to the church. And it was like, well, something is happening, you know what I mean? Our only increase before this is, was when babies were born and people came into the Catholic Church, and now now people are coming to the Catholic Church that didn't come before. And uh, man, <laughs> something is happening. This this thing works. You know what I mean? It catches like uh, you're catching the fire, as it were. Yes. And <laughs> it was a it, it it was a strange new beginning. And then for the first time ever, we were praying to God directly in our own words. And that was a good change. You know, the Catholics you would always say, if somebody, if Aunt Mary or, uh, or Uncle Harry was sick, you would say three Hail Marys for them. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, you might say, now Father and three Hail Marys, that somebody will get well. And you say that, those prayers that many times. But we never pray to God, like, in, like Lord God in Jesus' name, heal some. We never, we never prayed directly, and now we were doing that, and uh, it was, um, it was um, a real yeah. distinct movement. I remember the huge. It was that a charismatic movement. It was about. There was only about twenty of us in 1972. It was actually on the 16th of March, the day before St. Patrick's Day, that's how I remember 1972, and at a meeting I was thanking God that I was uh, such a good Catholic priest, and I was thanking God I was so humble and kind, and, uh, and then I, I, I was, um, I hate, hate to say, so, so biblically stupid to, to, to say, to, uh, and God, I give you permission to humble me even more if, if you wish. I mean, you don't give God permission, you know. <laughs> We're talking about an abomination and prayers. But anyway, that was my prayer on that evening. And then it was the same evening um, that I had a disastrous accident where I split the back of my head and damaged my skull. I was three days unconscious, and I got as close to death as anybody could get. And uh, after uh, uh, some time in hospital, and then some time, about three months in the sanatorium recovering, um, I started to study the Bible. And um, it was then that um, I, I, um, I really began to see um, that we have to study the Bible. And now the Assemblies of God were teaching us from the Bible and teaching mm -hmm. us that uh, just as the apostles spoke in tongues, we must speak in tongues, you know right. what I mean? And you, you mentioned that on a few occasions, and I find that just a, a, astounding, uh, is that you had been speaking in tongues for 10 years before you became a Christian, before you were biblically saved according to Scripture. Is that? That, that, that is correct. I was actually, it was a little bit more than 10 years, it was more like 13 years. But uh, it was during that, that time, uh, going up to 1985, uh, I was very big in speaking. I became one of the leaders of the Catholic Charismatic Movement. Mm -hmm. I spoke at some of the conferences that we had in Dublin. Uh, sorry, not in Dublin. Actually, I did later on, and actually, when, when I traveled, I came to Ireland, I spoke at a conference in Dublin mm -hmm. itself. But I spoke in the West Indian situation, in Port of Spain, I spoke, and I spoke in, 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 in Barbados, you know, in the neighboring island. And then I was asked then by the Assembly of God, the same leader who had come at influence with the Assembly of God mm -hmm. in Canada, and the Assembly of God wanted me to go and preach in their churches and then to, to try and unite their church with the Catholic Church. And I did that in Vancouver, uh, in, in Canada, and I also did it in, then in Seattle, the, 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 the Pentecostals in Canada, knew the, uh, the Pentecostal Assembly mm -hmm. of God in Seattle, mm -hmm. and I spoke there at, a, at so some so Catholic the glue church. the that was really holding you together with the Pentecostals 
It was the, the tongue experience. It was the tongue experience. It was the tongue's experience. And uh, then I learned how to, in the parishes that I ran uh, on the mission field, we didn't just run one church. We ran a good many churches. Mm -hmm. And then we had, uh, we had um, people who were designated Eucharistic ministers to, mm -hmm. to, to run services. And when we couldn't go to St. Mass, they would bring what we call the consecrated uh, host to, to hand out communion. And uh, it was um, in those parishes that I ran, the, you know, the churches that I ran, it was, um, I was trying to get people to do the Life and the Spirit seminars that I had done. Mm -hmm. And at the end of about five days, five evenings a week, they would come. We would teach them how to speak in tongues. And I became quite good at speaking in tongues. I had studied in uh, Hebrew and I studied Greek and I studied, uh, you know, I had my own Gaelic language besides uh, English and uh, I knew a little bit of Italian as well because of the, um, I'd spent uh, nine months in Italy. So it was, uh, I, I could use some of the Hebrew words and then get going and in really these strange sounds or so, because I knew a lot of strange sounds of different languages. So some people used to say I have a great prayer language. But it, it really began to bother me because um, um, I was fairly well versed in Greek too. And uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not a Greek scholar, but I did study Greek. Mm -hmm. And I know that lossolalia is, is the word for languages, you know what I mean? And it was, uh, um, I had discovered Strong's Concordance back then too, and I knew that it was when we studied the Bible, it we see clearly that they spoke in the known languages of the time, and people heard them in their own. Exactly. It was a, it was yeah. a real language, and it used to bother me that this is really unlightened babble. Exactly. I mean, all out. let's go one accord in the spirit. Speak. Who are you? Pick out. Le broka sotiri ya baba mama. Kindori ya masindori ka baba baba. Rika masondori ya makundoli ya baba baba. Shiri ya mama kandeli ya mama kindeli ya. Rumwa kili ya mama kandeli ya basandeli ya kere. Ria kole ya baba 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 baba. Riki ni ya makandeli si diomo. Li ya makili ya baba kilo li ya mama. We are languages from the dead and forefathers. Pastors use us without discerning. We rule churches. Members, speak if you like. Try me. I thank you, Lord, that we don't have to know the right way. We just have to give our heart to you. And just begin speaking. Just make sure that you're not speaking your native language. Just go ahead and speak. Unlightened babble. Exactly. I mean, all languages are intelligent. I right. mean, they're all, they all make sense. Right. <laughs> you That's know? how we might you yeah, know, yeah, refer yeah, to yeah, yeah. someone's native tongue. You, yeah, were, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, it's like the ability to in, speak in, in, in a in, language. In Hebrew, Bereshit bara Elohim. That's the first word in, of, of, in the beginning was God, you know, right. uh, and God created the world. That, that's the Hebrew for it, but it, those words are intelligent. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so it's, it's in all different languages are intelligent, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, this is, this was babbling and it used to bother me uh, so much so that it would even upset my stomach. I said, this is strange because I do know some languages myself. Uh, I'm European and not American. You know, you grow up with a tradition of knowing other languages. and. Uh, this is babbling, and it it, uh, it began to bother me, uh, Greg, and uh, um, and um, the Assemblies of God thought that I was one of their star boys, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, they wanted to, me to do some big um, speaking engagements, and they had invited me uh, there in the. Uh, in the 70s, they invited me to come to Vancouver, British Columbia, 
and then down to Seattle. And I was to speak together with a, a very well-known um, Pentecostal priest, Dennis Bennett, you know, with the same surname. And, uh, and this was going to be advertised, you know, Dennis Bennett and Richard Bennett and would be the key speakers at this conference. And I said no. And they were aghast. Mm -hmm. Because they had beginning to make flyers and you know, posters and everything for this, and uh, <laughs> I just said no. I said, I really have to, I really have to find out. After that accident I had, I was mm -hmm. trying to search in the Bible. How are we right with God? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you'll see, <laughs> you'll see on my web page. Uh, are you right with God? That's one of the headings of the windows I have there. And that was exactly my struggle. Right. <laughs> it's spelt out in that in that little tract. Uh, some people say uh, that's the best thing you ever <laughs> wrote, Richard. You published four books, but that little tract is the best thing you ever wrote. It, it's good because it was. Part, it really shows my struggle, what I was struggling with. What is the authority by which we know the word of truth? Are we saved by? rituals or is it exactly. the God's yes. grace? Is it in my heart or is it in Christ? Mm -hmm. uh, like in my Catholic Bible I underlined Ephesians chapter 1 and 2, uh, 42 times it says in Christ, you know, accepted in the beloved. We don't accept Jesus into our heart, we're accepted in Him. Afterwards when He sanctifies us, He comes within us, but not not that initially it's we're accepted in Christ salvation is in him it's not in any uh, in any church or any human heart it's in Christ and I saw these differences and I really struggled with them and then I was getting not just beyond Pentecostalism I was coming to biblical faith mm -hmm. and I thank God that it was uh, finally and um, coming to the end of um, in October uh, um, 1985 that um, mm -hmm. I had come to really see biblical faith and I had cried out to God to give me the grace and faith to be right because I saw that intellectually I understand that I'm a sinner before holy God I understand it's God's grace nothing I can do and uh, and I understand that faith itself is a gift of God like it mm -hmm. says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9 it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And um, I um, cried out to God and right. praised God, and then the Lord really changed me, and um, I stopped, um, I had stopped not just only dr drinking beer and rum, but I stopped babbling. <laughs> and um, it is amazing, and as I've heard you tell your story in so many places, um, it's, it's the fact that all the rituals that you were doing as a priest and then as you shifted into false doctrine of Pentecostalism, these doing the rituals of speaking in tongues, it, it never worked, it never transformed. It, it, yeah, and that, that, that used to bother me too, you know, when, uh, um, again, when I worked in Trinidad, um, my first year was in Port of Spain, the main city. The second biggest city is San Fernando in Trinidad, but I worked more in the small, in the towns, like in San Gregandi my last seven years, and uh, Point of Pier uh, for previous seven and a half years, and Mayaro, a seaside um, resort um, mm -hmm. town where I, where I worked down there, Guayaguayari, uh, Claxton Bay, they're all small towns, and I knew people's individual lives, and here I see people babbling in tongues and living in adultery you know what I mean, or fornication and some of the young people we had in the choir you know they were mm -hmm. they were singing in the choir but they were also on drugs and into fornication and things and and I was aghast I said it's not just that the sacraments don't work but Pentecostalism somebody can be babbling and the life's still very immoral and I said this it really really physically upset me too because mm -hmm. uh, um, we're, we're human creatures and our feelings can physically uh, and it, it, it really literally turned in my stomach because uh, mm -hmm. 
this is who I am. Uh, uh, like I was born Catholic, as it were, you know what I mean? And uh, as the old saying is, born Catholic, die Catholic. And, and it, it's my culture. It, it's who I am. And, yeah. and how can I... How can I give up who I am? This is not, <laughs> this is not a religion. This is my identity. You know what I mean? And, and I, I can empathize with <laughs> with people who, if you say this is this is who I am. Right. This is who my parents were. My grandparents. My grandparents. And what could be quite similar to modern day Pentecostals and Charismatics, who their identity. In, as a Christian, it forms around speaking. I, I know, and, I, yeah, yeah. And, and then when you come to realize that this thing doesn't work, exactly. it, it, it doesn't work. It, well, it works to deceive, and and, uh, it, deceive. It, and yeah, you can feel real good of it. You know what I mean? You were you were there uh, with your hands out, speaking in tongues and giving a prophecy. A, a big. Uh, lady had prophesied over me in King James English, you know, thus says the Lord, you shall be a great mediator between the Catholic Church and the Assemblies of God. God has called you to this holy office of being a mediator between the Assemblies of God and, and the Catholic Church. And she had prophesied over me. And then when I left the Catholic Church, they were aghast because their prophetess, one of the famous, I don't want to give the name, if anybody asks me, I'll give it in <laughs> by mm. email, <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah. uh, it, it, the, you're, de you're depending on man's way. Yeah. You, you say it's a, a, a prophecy, a word from God, and it's, it's, it's man's way, and this word of faith, name it and claim it, you know what I mean? We yeah. had, people naming and claiming all sorts of things of course it never never came about and it was a it was a it was frighteningly unreal and yeah. um, I, I just asked uh, like us to to wake up and and to see the reality of these things because lives are at stake and you who are parents to think about if you're bringing your children up in this how are you deceiving them yeah you, it, it, it's a difficult world that we live in in yeah. 2015, coming into 2016, uh, we live in a difficult world and we must have our spiritual bearings correct. Yeah. And we need to know the Lord and know that we are in the Lord and that we are chosen in Him before the foundation of the world, as it says in, mm -hmm. in, in uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. And in, in chapter 2, you've been dead in trespasses and sins as He saved. Uh, it is by grace you're saved through faith and not of you says it is the gift of God, not of works lest anyone boast. And spiritual works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and uh, yes, it do, they don't, it's not of any type of work. Yeah, exactly. I, I tried them all to the hilt <laughs> and not, nothing, nothing worked. Yeah. And I ask you, dear listener, <laughs> that you yourself see, search and see that the scripture is true and the message is true. And when you cry out to God for faith, He gives it. Mm -hmm. And you know when your life is transformed. Um, I had, as I said, at, at that time, and back in 85, um, I had to give up drink. And um, being an Irish man, drink was a lot to me. And it, 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 it was not only was soothing, but I, I, I became dependent on it. Mm -hmm. I couldn't sleep at night if I didn't have uh, a few beers and then toppled off it with a half glass of rum and um, I was able immediately to get that up mm -hmm. and I knew that my life had been changed and I knew I had a peace with God for the first time yeah. and I knew that uh, when when I die or when the Lord comes, I'm ready, you know what I mean? And I, I, yeah. and I had a joy and for the first time, <laughs> you see it even in photographs of me some of the look at the photographs before I I was saved and it's always a, a strong staunch <laughs> believer in in the sacraments, mm -hmm. but afterwards it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. <laughs> well, thank you for really sharing your heart on the topic and it uh, it it bringing our our conversation back to you know the very early. Uh, days of this ecumenical movement, it was obvious that the Pentecostal and charismatic churches were instrumental in uniting ro the Roman Catholic Church with so-called Protestantism and drawing people back towards Rome and 
you know, it's, it's been many years now, but it's extremely active today. It's very alive and well. In fact, uh, it was just uh, in 2014 that there was an enormous outreach in, uh, orchestrated by the Vatican in which um, Kenneth Copeland and his congregations did a live broadcast with uh, ending with a special message to American Pentecostal and Charismatic churches directly from Pope Francis. That's something really, really special the Lord has blessed us with tonight. And uh, somebody I want to introduce to you, Brother Tony, come on up, would you please? And uh, Tony Palmer, some of you may know Tony. Tony and I go way back, but he's going he's gonna to be telling you the story. I asked him to come give his testimony, and he's got a special message for us tonight. So would you welcome Tony Palmer to this platform? Bishop, thank you, sir. Dear brothers and sisters, excuse me. because I speak in Italian, but I am not speaking English. But uh, I will speak uh, no Italian, no English, but carefully. È una lingua più semplice e più autentica. E questa lingua del cuore ha un linguaggio, è una grammatica speciale. La grammatica semplice, due regole. Ama Dio soprattutto e ama l'altro perché è tuo fratello e la tua sorella. E con queste due cose andiamo avanti. Io sono qui con mio fratello, mio vescovo fratello Tony Palmer. Siamo amici da anni. E lui mi ha detto che il vostro compagno, il vostro raduno, e vi chiedo anche un favore di pregare per me perché ho bisogno delle vostre preghiere. Io prego per voi, eh? lo farò, <ride> ma io ho bisogno delle vostre preghiere e pregare al Signore perché ci unisca tutti. E avanti, siamo fratelli, ci diamo spiritualmente questo abbraccio e lasciamo che il Signore finisca l'opera che Lui ha incominciato. Perché questo è un miracolo, il miracolo dell'unità è incominciato. Oh. Glory, glory, glory. Tony, thank you, sir. Come on, the man asked us to pray for him. Oh, Father. Father, we, we answer his request. And since we know not how to pray for him as we ought other than to agree with him in his quest and in, in his, his, his heart for the unity of the body of Christ, we come together in the unity of our faith. Hallelujah. So, Father, we just, all of us now, according to Scripture, when we know not how to pray as we ought, we pray for Him in the Spirit. We receive utterance in the Holy Ghost. We receive prayers of faith. We receive, sir, we receive words that are not our own. Crema 
shtelu klopa i klevo le kamana, brëmande e kiri kopo më mblesh do boshkirit, të le keto le kamba glenina, ma klo, ma hala, largero dhe levenu, breto shtesh kimane të elo. Kere bana, kere bana, pala ku mon për le kitu kle shtindo dhe u kle kala, shte kle afore ma tili e kile dhe ku ma kalara. Oh, hallelujah. Right now, heaven is thrilled over this. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So this movement is still active today, and... Um, and it has also spread into other areas. It's not just the Pentecostals. As your ministry grew over the last 25 years, Richard, I've seen how you've addressed this as it came to um, accords and things that were joint declarations of faith between different dominations. Uh, it continues in all areas of, of the Christian uh, church in America and around the world. Yeah, and, and it go, let's go back to the to the early days mm -hmm. in the in, um, in 1967, and when the when the charismatic movement was really beginning here in the United States, you know, at, 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 a, at a Duquesne University, Notre Dame Catholic Universities, and uh, they were people were beginning to get into Pentecostalism. It was um, Pope Pius VI sent Cardinal Leo Sunans from Italy, from Rome, here to the United States to authenticate the fact that the Catholic charismatic movement is accepted in the Catholic Church and it is to be propagated. And so that was a, a big boost for Pentecostalism within the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. And it was like officially that, the, um, that there was to be a working together. And uh, that was why, and um, with the Assemblies of God where uh, whereby um, things were going really well and mm -hmm. TBN Trinity Broadcasting, you know, which has been known for <laughs> the right. horrendous things that it broadcast, but they ac accepted as Catholic priests, um, uh, like Victor Alfonso they spoke uh, there and uh, others, you know, who mm -hmm. were Catholic priests. But after <laughs> they were saved by God's grace and had a story to tell how their lives were transformed, yeah. uh, such as myself and people like Victor Alfonso and people like Bob Bush, you know, uh, they didn't want to hear anybody who's, who had left the Catholic Church mm -hmm. because they had come to biblical faith and uh, because they were closed. They were just open to the, the rituals of, of the charismatic show that yeah. goes on and mm -hmm. speaking in tongues and being slain in the spirit and all of this sort of thing. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it break your heart, Greg, and it, 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 uh, um, it, it, it broke my heart because I knew um, some of these priests who had been in the, in the charismatic movement with me mm -hmm. and I could see how their lives were disintegrating. Mm. And I would appeal to some of them, I'd say, you know, there's um, I have seen how you get out of this, that this is, this is binding your mind and your conscience. Uh, Richard, now that uh, we've, we've really covered the topic of the charismatic and Pentecostal involvement in ecumenism, a lot of people have not studied Roman Catholicism that are in Christian churches today. You know, you yourself spent many years in it. I was raised in Roman uh, Catholic uh, system. So we're aware of the uh, complete differences between Catholic faith and what we've discovered as biblical faith. It's, uh, most doctrines are almost 180 degrees opposite of true doctrine. So there is a danger that we clearly see. Um, is there a way that we can communicate to Christian people of the dangers of being involved uh, in this charismatic movement in its many forms? Um, Yes, um, it's uh, Christ Jesus said, by their fruits you shall know them. When you look at and analyze Pentecostalism and uh, when you 
analyzed uh, what they call the miracles. One of the well-known miracles was that a person's one foot was, long, was shorter than the other, and they, they pray over the feet, and now they, they get you to see that this person's feet were perfectly all right. Uh, and um, you begin to see that this is putting on a show. There's no reality to it, you know, and the, and the, the uh, other signs and wonders, you see that the, um, they're not real, you know, and mm -hmm. somebody says that they have a word from God, a prophecy to give, and you see that um, it doesn't come to pass. You see that the thing does not deliver. What delivers is when we pray in Jesus' name, he's the one mediator. We do not have little mediators called prophets going around prophesying or working miracles. It's Christ is our mediator, mm -hmm. and we don't have any other mediators, mm -hmm. either big charismatic, uh, big evangelical leaders who can draw you to Christ. It's Christ alone is the mediator. Mm -hmm. and when you see that the things keep people enslaved mm -hmm. and lives are not changed. You know what I mean? The, um, we produced there recently a new book that is setting really well on the wings of grace alone, uh, the testimonies of, of, um, <laughs> of 30 former Catholics. The one is, is called the Carnal Catholic, and you read his testimony. Oh. He was utterly worldly, and he kept going to confession and kept going to <laughs> Communion, you get communion, then back into his worldly style, and uh, yeah. uh, things didn't change. Um, A.J. Krauss did everything you could think of, mm -hmm. and things didn't change. You know I mean, you could, you can jump through all these hoops, and you don't. It doesn't get you anywhere. And at the end of the day, you don't have peace with God, yeah. and your life has not been transformed and spiritually you're going nowhere. And if you stay on the Pentecostal track, it leads to Rome, because yeah. mm -hmm. it's the Pentecostal churches that are the, the place where the pe Rome is, is accepted. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, um, it, it was in 1994 when Charles Colson and uh, Richard John Newhouse um, began to um, to bring in this e evangelicals and Catholics together and later in 1997, the second one of these documents. Uh, they purportedly had brothers and sisters in Christ, but they're not in Christ, neither, <laughs> neither the Pentecostals nor the Catholics or the, or the so-called evangelicals who, who want to do it man's way, you know, um, or the, those who want salvation to be, well, I accepted Jesus into my heart, I made my decision, <laughs> I put my stake into ground, <laughs> and uh, I know that uh, I once saved, I'm always saved, and it, it mm -hmm. doesn't add up. It's God who saves in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's his gift, it's not of us. When you get beyond that ritualism and the evangelical ritualism whereby you walk the aisle and sign the card and the pastor tells you you're saved and mm -hmm. put up your hand and receive Jesus into your heart. All of this tra-la-la is just the same as the Catholic sacraments. Mm -hmm. like, like I would say over people, I absolve you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, you know, do the sign and uh, say the words and people's sins were supposed to be forgiven. Mm -hmm. Uh, the words fell to the ground empty because it, yeah. it didn't do anything, and these things don't do anything, and uh, it doesn't deliver. But when you trust on Christ and look to Him and look to the Father to give you grace, man, does it work. Yeah. Uh, my own life, I see that from, um, I, I just keep going back. If you, if you want to know my testimony, it's all there in Psalm 103. <laughs> Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and always we bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. And Cured and, and uh, healed all thy diseases, who saved my, my life from destruction and crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. Sorry, I got the words mixed up there, but he saved thy life from destruction, crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, mm -hmm. who filled thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like an eagle. Yes. And it, it's such a joy to know 
that God does save our life from destruction. Mm -hmm. And this is destruction. If you remain in these rituals of Pentecostalism, yeah. you're more and more on the road to Rome. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you'll see that that's the way mm -hmm. some people have gone. If you, um, you see those testimonies of people who were Pent Assemblies of God pastors and, mm -hmm. and others who w went into the Catholic Church, it, it leads you to Catholicism. Yeah. And it, and it, it is a dangerous road. And it, and it is a dangerous road, and, and, and it, it lives remain the same, and there's no fruit. Mm -hmm. There's no, except yeah. the fruit of bitterness. I want to uh, touch a little bit about going back again to 1962, Richard, when you were uh, in Rome, and the way you explained it to me uh, years back, it, it really, it, it actually, uh, it was embedded in my mind, the, the vivid imagery that you saw when you saw during the Second Vatican Council the cardinals and the bishops as they flooded out into the Vatican Square and all dressed in scarlet and purple. Uh, it wasn't 1960, it was actually 63. 63, 63 yeah. going into 64. Uh, I was, um, uh, for that academic year, we were starting in uh, September um, of um, 1963. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, um, one evening after college, uh, at the, um, you know, we would get on the mm -hmm. bus or tram and, and go to the, um, uh, from the, um, where we we had a Via La Vicana, mm -hmm. the um, where where um, we had our Dominican house, and you'd you take you take uh, the bus right over to to the Vatican City and go mm -hmm. to the Vatican, and I was able to get up really on the behind where St Peter's is, where you're looking actually down on the square, mm -hmm. a real a real really good position, and I saw it was over three thousand. Wow. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, archbishops, bishops, mm -hmm. and cardinals came out into the square. And this is not Hollywood putting on <laughs> a movie. This is reality. I'm looking at this. Yeah. And the square is filling up mostly with purple, because purple was the color of the bishops. Mm -hmm. But the cardinals, not as numerous, but the cardinals distinctive because their whole dress is all scarlet. Yeah. So scarlet and purple. And I hadn't studied the Bible. We studied little bits here and there, but our uh, uh, three years philosophy was Aristotle, uh, his philosophy, and four years was the, the theology of St. Thomas Aquinas. And, yeah. you know, and, and we learned how to do the sacraments and all of these other things, but we didn't study the Bible as such. Mm -hmm. But I did know Revelation 17, yeah. that the woman who rides the beast is, is clothed in scarlet and purple. And I said, could it be that I'm seeing <laughs> what St. <Saint> John <laughs> talked about in, in the yeah. book of Revelation? And I said, no, no, put that out of your mind. Oh, I can't think of this. The, 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 that's not right, I should think about this. So I, I tried to, <laughs> I tried to, <laughs> to make sure I wouldn't think about it. But <laughs> it, it, actually, that memory, that memory stayed with me all those years. Yeah. Uh, I had seen something, and I knew but. Rome depends on the cup, um, you know, the golden cup yeah. for, for the mass and, and that um, the, the, the gems and all that. Mm -hmm. the, each each uh, bishop had, had a pectoral cross with gems in it, and I, I knew some of those other de details. And historically, I knew that uh, she had drunk the blood of the saints. I knew mm -hmm. that from the Inquisition, it was horrific history where the Catholic Church had um, mm -hmm. people tortured. Yeah. and put to death for 605 years. Uh, later on, I made a video on that. That was, of course, many, many years after leaving right. Catholicism. And I didn't know all those details then, right. but I knew some of them. But then this was frightening. And yeah. it, it really is a reality. Um, is this the one that Paul spoke about in Second Thessalonians 2, the man of sin mm -hmm. sitting in the temple of God? calling himself God. What other religion is there that the man in charge calls himself the Holy Father? Yeah. That's a title from God. Yeah. 
and sitting in the temple of God, calling himself God, the Holy Father, and calling himself mm -hmm. the Vicar of Christ. The Vicar of Christ is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Christ said he would send another advocate, yeah. another substitute. substitute. And yeah. it, it's the Holy Spirit. So who calls himself the Vicar of Christ or the Holy Father? Only the Pope. Yeah. And he, and that's what Paul speaks about in Second Thessalonians 2. Read it for yourself. And mm -hmm. it's it's frightening. Yeah, it's it, it is frightening, and it's actually a, a, a warning um, to Christian people who are getting involved in an ecumenical system. That this is the reason why it's important, Richard, is because God has spoken on the subject. This is just not wild speculation, complaining about one denomination versus the other. The very written word of God addresses this issue, and I. I just wanted to take a moment to read from the Revelation uh, chapter 17, verses 3 through 6. And this is a vision that uh, the Apostle John was given by God. He says, So he carried me away in the spirit and into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names and blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her head, her forehead, was the name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration and, you know, just as you saw this imagery in, in real life while you were in Rome, Richard, what the individual can do today, just if you go onto Google, go into the search engine and type in scarlet and purple and click images, and you will see exactly what Richard has saw back in 1962 at the very beginning of this massive ecumenical movement that is sweeping across the nation and the world. And, John also had a, a, a vision, uh, it, was a, it was a warning, it was a warning to people in chapter 18 verses 4 and 5 and John said, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of the plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. You know, this is the reason why we need to understand the ecumenical movement. It's not just a simple emotional thing that you want to do with your friends and colleagues involved in um, you know, large outreach events where churches unite. It is where this road is leading, and it's leading to judgment, and God is calling you as a Christian person to come out from among them. You do want to receive her plagues. Um, can you follow up on that, Richard? Uh, yes. Um, we we must leave a system yeah. and come into life in Christ Jesus, but it has to be done by the power of God. Yes. And uh, the, the bottom line, first of all, is not, doesn't seem to be good news, but it turns out to be good news. We have to see who we are by nature. Mm -hmm. By nature, we are born sinners because we have a sin nature. We're more inclined to evil than to do good. Mm -hmm. And then we've all committed sin and even one sin like what they call a white liar so is is sin before holy god mm -hmm. to utterly separate you from god we're all sinners and so it says in ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 you've been dead in trespass and sins not that you're wounded but you're dead spiritually dead we've got to realize that so you look to god no you don't look to any church you look to god and ask him for the faith, mm -hmm. and then to activate that faith by grace, so that you may believe. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it, it really works. He gives you the faith, and then he activates it by his grace. And it, then you know in yourself and in your experience, you know and can say the words, by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works lest anyone yeah. should boast, because yeah. that becomes your story. Right. And 
It's the real story and it really works. And you can see verse 10, saved unto good works. Yeah. You're saved to do good works. Mm -hmm. And you can see then that'll give stability for your marriage, that'll give stability for your life, mm -hmm. that'll give you stability if you're inclined to drink, to come off it. Mm -hmm. And it'll give you stability to be faithful to your wife or wives be faithful to your husband. And it, it gives you that, but Apostle Peter said, and I use the words already, joy unspeakable and full of glory. And it, it really is wonderful. And I'd ask you, dear listener, to really hear this word, because it's not only to get beyond babbling and to get beyond rituals, but it is to come into Christ. And you can, you can get beyond things. I, I met there at, um, at the supermarket the other day. Um, I met a man who I, you know, uh, he was standing beside, behind me at the, at the checkout, you know, and uh, I asked him how he was before God, and he said, well, I've, I've left the Catholic Church, but he said, I'm, I'm, I'm lost. And that's the way it is with so many people. Yeah. You know, you've left, uh, uh, I said, don't throw the baby out with the bath water, you've left. It's, but there is a genuine Christianity to share. Mm -hmm. and I've seen people like that, and uh, mm -hmm. a good friend of mine, Michael Moroffi, called me one day, and he had witnessed to somebody also to in the express lane in the supermarket. You were know, only have, uh, under five goods, and they do it, you know, quickly. He had witnessed, and the man actually came home with him afterwards. Mm -hmm. And he was a former Catholic who had left Catholicism, but hadn't come to faith. Yeah. And it's you look to God and read, read. Ephesians chapter 1 and 2 and read the book of John, God's Gospel, mm -hmm. and you will know, <laughs> you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And, and I ask you, and it's, a, it's always a joy to me in making a program like this, and I'm ha thankful that you, you had this interview, uh, Greg, Greg Bentley, I'm, I'm happy. But I'd ask you to email me, and that it's always a joy to hear from you. My email address you will see on your screen. It's uh, Richard M. Bennett at yahoo.com. Uh, M for Michael, my middle initial, I put it in because you know there are many people and there will be many Richard Bennett's on Yahoo, so it's Richard M. Bennett at yahoo.com. And um, it may take me a few days to get to you, but we will answer and it would be a joy to hear from you and uh, look to God. And I would ask that you would explain the message today to others. and. If you have this uh, on your iPhone or your iPad, uh, to, you know, to shoot it off to some other people and let them share too. And uh, we would share the good news together and get beyond ritualism and babbling and all these other things into Christ. And to Him be the glory, the praise, the worship, and the honor. Amen. If you would like a free newsletter on this or other subjects, just give us a call at Christian Answers. The phone number is area code 512-218-8022. That's 512-218-8022. Or you could email us at cdebater at aol.com. That's cdebater at aol.com. Thank you. Hello, this is Larry Wessels, Director of Christian Answers of Austin, Texas, Christian Debater Ministries. I'm pleased to introduce to my audience a dear brother in the Lord, Richard Bennett, Director of Berean Beacon Ministries, an outreach to Roman Catholics. It is great to be here, Larry. For people that don't know you, you were a Roman Catholic priest for 22 years. Is that right? Please give us a short account of your life. Yes, I was a Catholic priest for 22 years. I was a Catholic altogether for 48 years, having grown up in Dublin, Ireland. I was trained uh, very early on in my education, in what we call secondary and elementary education, uh, by the Jesuits. And then I decided to become a Catholic priest, and I spent eight years uh, in preparation. It was a novitiate year, and then 
six years to ordination when I was ordained a priest in Dublin, Ireland in 1963 and then one year in Rome, eight years in all. Then I spent uh, 21 years in uh, Trinidad West Indies as a parish priest carrying out the the work of a priest. I had the best academic training you could get finishing up in the city of Rome itself near the Vatican and I I really had a desire to bring P Catholics to uh, what we thought was a way of being right with God so that they could get to purgatory and then that they finally could get to heaven and I was great for doing penances and sacrifices and then I was very devout in Trinidad uh, uh, baptizing babies, hearing people's confessions and doing all the sacraments. It was in 1972 I had a very serious accident where I was three days unconscious after the serious accident and then after that time when I got out of the hospital in the sanatorium I began searching in the Bible for what is true. It took me 14 years of comparing the Bible to Catholicism before I realized that I was dead in trespasses and sins and it was by grace alone that we are saved. I One night I got on the floor in my house and I cried out to God for faith and his grace to save a wretch like me dead in trespass and sins and he gloriously did that. It was about two months afterwards I very reluctantly left the Catholic Church because my prayer after I was right with God by biblical salvation was that I could really love Catholics and give them the real true gospel of grace that is grace alone, faith alone and in Christ alone. But then in prayer over those two months after I was saved, the Lord showed me that I could best serve him and love Catholics if I left actually the priesthood and the Catholic Church and reached out to Catholics nonetheless. And um, I, I did that. I left uh, the priesthood in 1985 and uh, reached the States in 1986 and uh, I um, I just prayed and prayed that I would have a love for Catholics to reach out. I thank the Lord that after one year as a missionary in China I was able to start the ministry that I now have called BereanBeacon.org. It is to show Catholics the real truth of where salvation is in a person, not in any church, and it is by God's grace, not by any ritual that any church does. So this has been really wonderful. I've seen priests save. I saw two priests in Poland, you know, through our ministry. We have a Polish webpage, besides many other languages, and of course in English. And I thank God that I have seen God's grace poured out, and that is my heart's desire, Larry that Catholics would know the truth and that evangelicals in this very false ecumenical age would see the differences. Uh, I have a very interesting article on the webpage. Uh, are Catholics Christians? And we've had tremendous response to that, evangelicals whose eyes have been opened in reading that article. So it's with love for Catholics and to show the truth of Christ Jesus, that God will be glorified and many, many souls saved particularly Catholics, to the glory of his name. Outstanding. That was a wonderful testimony, Richard. Uh, could you just real briefly tell us about, uh, you've written some books, and you've already mentioned your ministry, but what are these books you've written, and how can people find them? Yes, I have written or edited, uh, written some and edited others, and uh, they have been amazing. I just thank God. Uh, our most well-known book is Far From Rome, Near to God, The Testimonies of 50 Converted Catholic Priests. Since 1994, that book has sold steadily across the world in English and in other languages. And uh, it's on the third edition now. And uh, the other book that has my heart really displayed and my love for Catholics is the book I've written about Catholicism called Catholicism, East of Eden, Insights into Catholicism for the 21st Century. This book is uh, published by Banner of Truth Trust, like the uh, book of the 50 Testimonies of Former Priests. And um, 
I thank God for that because the Lord has used that book and it brought many Catholics to himself by that book. Uh, the other book that my heart was in in editing together with Mary Hertel is a book called The Truth Set Us Free. 20 former nuns tell their stories and that book has been used mightily of the Lord as well and I thank God for the, those women most of whom are still alive and active in reaching out to Catholics themselves and it is just a wonderful testimony of God's grace and the the other book I've written is called On the Wings of Grace Alone I've edited that and that is just 30 ordinary Catholics and uh, what we call lay Catholics and how the Lord brought them to salvation. That is a, an amazing book too. How can you obtain these books? Well, go to our webpage, bereanbeacon.org and just go to the folder on the left-hand side, Books, and when you click on that, it gives all the details of how you can get those books. Outstanding. Well, Richard, uh, we're going to go into uh, showing people your videos now here across uh, particularly our audience on YouTube. But uh, many people don't know that you and me go to the same church here in Austin, Texas. So it gives me a special opportunity to be around you a lot just so we can do ministry work. But anyway, I want to thank you for allowing us to post your videos uh, on the Internet through YouTube and other Internet servers. You praise God and may souls be saved and the Lord glorified. Amen and amen. Amen.